Hey guys, welcome back! We're on episode 251. 251. Finally past that 250 so we can stop mentioning it every week? Yes. That's right, 251. What will we talk about from now? <laughs> 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 mm. What are we talking about today, actually? Actually, today we have... Well, at least I have put together that full metal panic kit from Aoshima. And as far as new releases go this week, there wasn't, as you can see here, there wasn't actually a whole lot of new stuff that came in. We did have the new from Origin. You know how during the giveaways we've been giving away a lot of Origin kits lately. Mm -hmm. But we actually have a new Origin kit that just came in this week. Although it's not really completely new, as we've already had a Zaku 1 before. But this is a new version, I should say, maybe a new recolor for... Kisilia, Kisilia, Kishiria, Kisilia's Forces Zaku 1. So it's got a nice blackish and gray look to it. A tiny little spike on the helmet there. Yep, and you know what? I'm going to build this one. Oh, okay. What does that leave for me? Well, I'm going to give you a break time. Because <gasps> I'm feeling so generous right now. Okay, although if you think about it, I still have something I haven't finished yet. Oh, yeah, yeah, some, <laughs> something that you only built the head of and right, then just this... left him stranded there. Maybe, uh... maybe, maybe, maybe next week I should give him a hand. <laughs> maybe, maybe a few other body parts, too. <laughs> maybe a few other body parts. We'll have to see. But actually, another thing, too, is we, I've gotten actually a couple of questions regarding that Yamato ship kit. Oh, really? There's been a couple of questions that have come in, like, asking, like, they're confused about, like, the LEDs. Mm -hmm. Like, how do you turn them on? And, like, what's the deal with this other LED set? Does it come with it? How does, how does it get that? So maybe I should probably put that one together to answer some of these questions. He just wants to build another I Yamato don't ship. Build the but maybe I could do Yamato, and maybe I can do some parts for the Godzillas, because I really do want to put together Godzillas. So. Yeah, or maybe you could just do the whole kit. Oh, oh I don't know. That's a big kit. <laughs> it's going to be piece by piece. Yeah, but I mean, the head was the hardest part, right? It oh, had all the... Actually, the I think the tail oh. might be the most, because the tail is going to have a whole bunch of parts. Because I remember building the tail for the... I always forget the name of it, for the scorpion one, and that tail was kind of complex, just because of the number of parts you have to put together I see. for it. So. Well, you do that, mm. I'll do this, and okay. we'll have a good show next week. All right, that sounds like a plan. All right, why don't you hand that back over for now, though? I promise to give it back to you. <laughs> you might just need something more decorative over here. It's a little blank. It is it. a little blank. Not so much came in this week. But for this week, let's take a look at this Aoshima kit, shall we? Let's see, how exactly does this stack up compared to maybe some Bandai or Kotobuki kits? Maybe let's discuss that, shall yeah. we? All right. So from Aoshima this time, we have from Full Metal Panic, this is the Arm Slave Grinsbach M9 Commander type. And it says Melissa Mao version 1.5. 1.5, I see. Okay, so actually when I was putting this kit together, I'm like, man, this kit feels like a master grade kit from long ago, not like an up-to-date Bandai kit. And actually, I went back on our site, and I, I looked it up, and actually I didn't realize originally when I grabbed this kit, because it's in such a nice new fancy box, but this kit originally came out back in 2009, I believe. At least that is the date listed on our site. But I don't think Sid ever probably covered it back in those days, because that was probably around when Gunpla TV was maybe just getting started and whatnot, and this isn't technically a Gundam, so he probably didn't cover it. But today we can. We're finally catching up on some old kits, I guess we should say. And let's see. All right, so as far as how it compares to a Bandai kit, let's start off with that. So I did mention it kind of felt like you're building like an older master grade kit. So if you... It's a bit more difficult to put this kit together compared to, say, an HG kit. Now, for the joints and, like, the arms, you have these little tiny metal pins, I think it was pointed out during our small unboxing last week. And those pins can be just a little bit tricky to try and get into the joints. But as far as the overall build goes, it wasn't really terribly too difficult to put this kit 
kit together, I would say. Not as easy as a high grade kit, but maybe comparable to a master grade kit. And speaking of master grade kits, this kit actually is about, you can see it's a right, really right about the same height as a master grade. Here we have the 3.0 and boy is this still really just a, a stunning looking kit. Isn't it? Wow. Okay, but this isn't about this. I just wanted to compare the <laughs> compare the heights, but yeah. Well, this is a really great kit. I just realized looking at it again. But there we go. Stay. All right, but anyway, this is still actually, it's a pretty great kit. Now, there was one thing that I noticed on this kit that I building when I'm building so many Gundam kits, I haven't actually seen this very often, and that is something called Flash. Now, if you were only been building Gundam kits and whatnot, you might actually not know what Flash is. And what Flash is, is when they make the parts on the runners, sometimes a little bit of plastic kind of like seeps out on the sides, and you'll have to kind of clean up that extra, the extra bits of plastic that are just hanging off on the side. And this kit, maybe just because it's a bit of an older kit, there was actually some parts on there that had a flash. So I had to go in there kind of with my knife and scrape it off. And that's just something I never do with Gundam kits. But anyway, let's take a look, shall we, at what does this kit have to offer? Now the knee is double jointed, so you do kind of get some good posability, but you can see it's got a ball joint for the hip, and this is something you would kind of see more on like HG kits or some of the older kits, but it holds the leg on there pretty well, except if you bend it farther than what you expect. The foot has a little bit of, you can kind of bend the toe out a little bit, so. That's kind of good. The legs, you can't really do the splits like I show on some of the more recent Gundam kits. It, it has that ball joint, so it is a bit more limited, but forward and back, you can go freely as much as you want. Just side to side, you won't be able to get it as far out as you would like. Now, one thing that I did notice for the arms was kind of interesting is you can't really get them down flat. They kind of get stopped, so always his arms are going to be at least that bit, that much kind of sticking off to the side. And he's got the shield on top, and the shield kind of limits the arm's movement as far as pulling it out and going whatnot. But he's able to kind of bend, not completely up, well, maybe, maybe we can go for it, there we go. So it does have kind of a double joint for that elbow, so you get some pretty good movement there as well. Now, one thing I did want to mention also is like a Master Grade kit where you have that cool feature where usually there's a pilot figure sitting on the inside, this kit also does have a pilot sitting on the inside. And if you want to see the pilot, you kind of have to pull the head forward. So the chest and the head move forward. And let's see if you guys can see in there. You can let's kind of get see a that. little closer. You can't really see much of the pilot because he's kind of buried inside of this cockpit there. So you kind of can see the head in there. Now that makes this a bit tricky too because you only get one figure. So if you wanted like another figure for a different pose, or if you want to take him out, you really kind of have to uh, disassemble the kit quite a bit to get this figure out of the, there. So you kind of maybe maybe make a choice. Do you want the figure inside? Do you want the figure outside? I say just leave him on the inside. Being a commander type, this one has a kind of uh, antenna on the back, like you would see on the Zaku. They have the little extra antennas. The shoulders have quite a, a little bit of movement, so you can kind of pose his arms forward a bit as well. And that's kind of good. Now, one thing where this kit does really kind of excel at is the amount of weaponry that he is equipped with. Now, I have put on him the sheath cutter. It's kind of like a sword, but they call it a cutter. And this one can plug into the side of it. Now, you have an option for these kind of, uh, what would you call that, like a side skirt there. Now you can either use this one here that has the hole so you can plug in weapons, and there's also an optional one in here too that has a little plastic piece on the inside that gives it more detail. If you don't want to plug anything in, if you don't want that open hole, then you have a choice as far as that goes. 
Now for the sheathed sword, it actually doesn't really have the full sword on the inside, but it has kind of just the little, let me see if it's easier for you guys to see it here. Just a little top of the sword that kind of just plugs in, just to give it that appearance of a sword actually being in there. So it's kind of loose when it's in there, so there's nothing really for it to click into. So a bit easier for that to fall out. And actually they give you two two of these sheathed swords as well. So you have like the long version of the cutter and then you have a short version. But if you actually wanted to equip this in his hand, you do have the full actual cutters here. So you have that option if you want to equip it. So that's two swords here and you kind of have a longer dagger here, but there's also two more daggers, and this is another cool trick feature about this kit, is underneath his shoulders here, let me see, actually maybe I'm gonna pop off his arm so you guys can kind of see that better. There is a hidden compartment under here, I'm gonna reverse it around this way so that way you guys, so it won't fly out on me. This opens up, whoops, and it flew backwards, and on the inside you can hide these little daggers. So they just, they just kind of hold on inside of here, and then you can close this up, oops, and close it there, and it does a pretty good job of holding it, holding in there stable. So that's kind of cool, kind of cool, kind of fun, a little hidden compartment. Now he's not only equipped with guns, now on the box art for this guy... You mean sword. Sword, sorry. <laughs> for the you ruined it, you spoiled it. I spoiled my surprise. Oh my. Oh no. Hey Todd, what's coming up next? Let me tell you. So yes, on the box art for this kit, it shows basically she's just holding on to the swords. But you do have two machine gun options that you can equip this with as well. Yeah, I believe those are assault rifles, right? Yeah, I believe this one is an assault rifle. This one kind of looks more like a shotgun. You've got a extending armrest here, so that's kind of cool. It's not often, it doesn't seem like we get a lot of Gundam kits with a lot of different weapon options available. So that was really, really cool. And also, I want to mention, you get this really cool staircase. Isn't that great? But you don't get an extra figure to pose with it, so I guess if you wanted to create a scene on the side of the box... Actually, let me pull the box in here and see if I can get this on camera as I knock over. There we go. You, you kind of see they've got this cool little uh, little pose that you can maybe do if you want to put them in this kind of crouching forward pose and you can put the figure there sitting on top of the stairs. That is a cool option if you want to do it. All right, so one more thing that I wanted to mention with this kit is when we did the unboxing last week and I opened up the box and I saw all those parts, I was like, wow, this kit has a lot of parts, but actually there are oh a lot of parts on this kit that you just are not using. So you end up with quite a few spare <laughs> parts on here. Oh, here, Axel, I wanted to mention, you do have quite a few hand options as well. I just did the closed hands, but you have options for like kind of three finger pointing or you have a trigger finger or I think an open hand holding so for like the sword type. So you have some finger, some hand and finger options. That was kind of cool. They have like completely redundant polycap uh, runners in here that you don't use any parts at all. You know, maybe from. if you mess up 10 times, you've got a few spares. You got quite a few spares, actually. <laughs> so, yeah, if, if you if you are into collecting polycaps to use for future kits, although these probably won't be compatible with anything Bandai, but if you want to do some scratch building or whatnot, Aoshima's has got you covered with some spare parts. And this was the most confusing one to me because it has no runner number on it. And oh. you don't use this at all in the kit. It doesn't count for this. So this must be for one of the other versions they had and they figured, hey, let's just put it in the kit anyway, I guess. That's kind of cool. Thanks for the spare parts, Aoshima. 
Yeah, so that's kind of it going to do it for us and our look at the Aoshima Gernsback. He's got one leg here. Oh my. Oop. Let's put his other leg on. There we go. He's a cool kit. If you love Full Metal Panic, then really you should buy this kit. So yeah, it's a bit of an older kit. It's not maybe quite as banned I love, but it still builds into a great kit. And it wasn't such a bad build, I think. Yeah. It looks great when it's put together. And hey, if you like Full Metal Panic, You don't really have it. much options if you like Full Metal Panic. <laughs> hey, but, but with the new series coming out, you know, they'll probably bring us some new Right, stuff. and I, I, I wonder, when was the last time this kit was actually in production? Because, I mean... The date we have for the old kit on the site is 2009, so I'm yeah. not sure how how long after that 2009 release was this still available. So maybe this has been not available for quite some time as far as I know. So yeah, It's been a pretty long gap between the anime series too, so right. I wouldn't be surprised if, if this wasn't in production for quite a few years. Right, so maybe now is your chance to get it if you like Full Metal Panic. Maybe I should watch the series. Every time I start saying the name, though, I want to say Full Metal Alchemist. Oh, you know, I, know I like name. both series, There's a lot but of... it's just when I say Full Metal, like the first thing that comes to mind is Alchemist. Alchemist, okay. So I was so worried every time I say that <laughs> name I, that I, I'll accidentally say the wrong one. I guess there's a lot of Full Metal animes out there. Maybe they need to... I think just the two. Just the two? <laughs> They need to get more creative with their anime titles, maybe. No, no, no. Because, like, the, the Japanese is different. Ah, uh, okay. Full Metal Alchemist in Japanese is Hagane Renkin Jutsushi. Oh, yeah. So it's a little different. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry. I'll stop <laughs> talking about anime now. Okay, so you know what? I have comments. Oh, Let's boy. read those. All right, the first one comes to us from Foxhound, who hey, said, Foxhound. <laughs> I have to appreciate Build Fighters for bringing out some wild and unique ideas for Bandai's designs. Right, a person after my own heart. <laughs> yes, we all know how much you love Build Fighters. Hmm, it's great. All right, the next one comes to us from Lespaz, oh, who Lespaz. also joined us last week. And this time, now, uh, I, I apologize in advance if I mess this up. It's a bit of a tongue twister for me. Okay, here we go. What were those people in the late 70s thinking when, they, when naming the Xeon suits? I bet they were goofing around. Who in Gog's name decided to name a suit a Zok or a Zaku? Seriously, Gelgug these names. They're Gan bearable. Honestly, the only name that made sense in the first series was Ball. <sighs> Okay, I screwed that up a bit, but... <laughs> that was pretty... I thought he was pretty cre pretty creative with that comment there. <laughs> yes. Thank you for that. And and he mentioned the ball. And, of course, Todd picked this out to watch me screw it up. Thanks, Todd. <laughs> okay, the last one comes to us from Sheikah. The Gernsback and the old MG Pat Labor Ingram one are at the 148 scale, right? Right, so this is 148 scale, but I went and had a look on our site, and Bandai, I could only find one of the Bandai uh, Pat Labor kits in 48 scale, and that was the Type 98 AV Ingram. So that one was 148 scale, but it looks like some of the other Bandai Pat Labor kits were in 135th mm. scale, which is more traditional for like armor modeling and whatnot. So. Maybe not all of them are in 148 scale, but there is one 148 scale kit out there that you could buy. So that would be interesting to have these two next to each other just to see how they compare. Because yeah. they are both 148 scale. And if you really, really wanted like a, a staircase for that other kit, maybe you can take it from the Aoshima kit. <laughs> yeah, that's a nice cool. little accessory. Isn't it? It's kind of fun. I just, I just yeah, wish... Where's the pilot? You know, I do wish that they Did had... you leave him in there? Yeah, I just okay. left him in there. I do wish it came with an extra figure. Yeah. So you could have maybe one just like posing, sitting on there. And That's what I was thinking. Like I wanted to here. sit him on the stairs. Right. Uh, I thought about that, but I decided to leave him in there so I could show you guys during that review earlier. All right. Well, that was a really cool kit. It is indeed, it is. All right. So last week we had a kit to give away... And it was the Waff 
The Vuff that inspired the comment. Vuff kind of kit is this? Oh my god. Okay, so let's find out who is the winner of the Vuff. The winner of the Vuff goes to comment number 30. And this is from Baldorius. Is that how you say it? <laughs> Baldorius. I'll leave the accents to you. Baldorius. And Baldoria says, I'm so excited for the new season of Full Metal Panic. Me too. It's a great series not many know about. Like me. To have some kits of the mechas is the icing on top. Can't wait to see your build and review of the Arm Slave. And can't wait for the Arbalest release in November. Even if my backlog is huge, Arbalest is a must. Mm, okay, Arbalist. Very nice comment. We'll have to see Arbalist. Do we should we cover the Arbalist on the show? I don't know. I don't know. You better look it up. We'll have to see. November is here. All right. So Baldorius, we will be contacting you eventually on Hobby Link TV to get you your Vuff. All right. So since Lindsay is building origin kit, <laughs> yes. What uh, do you have for us? We have more origin. We're just going through all the origin, just have like a stack of origin. All right, so this is the YMS08B DOM test type. This is kind of cool. I like the DOMs, and this DOM has a really cool, unique look to him. Oh, Doesn't yeah. It? That is really nice. Cool. You can, here, you can see the size difference between the HG kit oh my gosh. and the Aoshima. <laughs> This guy's a little shorter than typical HG kits, right? He's a little shorter. He's got these big legs. That's right. He does not skip out on leg day. So he's got really kind of cool legs. But it's an origin kit. Looks like he's got some cool gimmicks going on, too. And he's got a really cool yeah, bazooka. A really big, cool bazooka. Now, the bazooka is kind of almost as tall as the Aoshima kit. Wow. That's cool. I really like the bazooka Ooh, in this kit. He's got a clear part on the scope, too. Yeah. He looks cool. They really did a good job with our origin kits. So, uh, Todd, what can they do to win this? Oh, well, that's a good question. Thank <laughs> you for asking, Lindsay. All right, if you guys would like to win the DOM test type for origin, all you have to do is go to hobbylink.tv, find episode number 251, and post a comment, and that's it. Maybe you'll win. Maybe. I look forward to reading the comments. Yeah. Let's see if we get some creative comments this week. <laughs> Please oh. continue with the puns. He <laughs> likes them a lot. Puns are great. Silly humor. All right. Well, I think that pretty much sums it up and does it for this episode. Yep. So, now you guys can find us where? on Tumblr, Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram if you want to check out some of our, well, some Gundam, but a lot of non-Gundam mm. stuff, too. We've got a lot of anime posts, sci-fi, what have you. So come check us out. Okay. That sounds fantastic. Thank you, Lindsay. <laughs> You're uh, welcome, Todd. <laughs> All right. And remember, guys, we are brought to you by HLJ.com, Hobby Link Japan. So please remember to buy your kits for us. Thank you for watching. And we will see you guys again probably next week. Probably. Probably. See ya. See you guys.